Hi, and welcome to my channel. For those of you new, my name is Dave, and I'm working in financial services. And these videos are mixed in journey towards financial freedom that will cover financial products and financial well-being. So let's get into this latest video. Now this latest video is somewhat different. It's about a recent survey carried out with regard to the house price in the UK. Now in a recent survey carried out by which, which included 2,000 people, it stated that 2.5% of people who have a mortgage or renters failed to make a payment during the last month of April 2023. So in the wider perspective, that's an estimated 700,000 people who have mortgage in place or who rent a property. Now the worrying statistic is that nearly all those are potentially among high net renters, with the amount being, let's just say, 1 in 20, so what, 5%, or nearly 6 in 10, 59% of those people affected admitted to making certain financial adjustments with regard to other areas of the finances. So let's just say deferring the payment of utility bills, eating out less or buying less groceries, not going on holidays, maybe cutting back children's clubs or after school activities. Now the bigger picture may also be the delaying of, so we say, big ticket items or making certain cutbacks with regard to, shall we say, saving and investing for the futures. Another report also said recently that has seen a large increase in the number of workplace employees opting out of their company auto enrollment pension schemes. Now, it may be a short term blip, but it will have dramatic effect on someone's future living standards further on down the line. Now, in recent times, we've enjoyed many years of unprecedented record low interest rates, which has only exacerbated the problem and has obviously fueled the highest cost of a housing crisis, which is considered unaffordable to most people in the UK. Now, in the past, average, average salaries was around about four times earnings. It's now about nine times earnings in the UK. And for London, it's to be believed to be in excess of 12%. Now, the Bank of England has a specific target, shall we say, of 2% to cover inflation. Although rates are coming down, shall we say, slowly but surely or gradually, okay, they're nowhere near as fast as they anticipate, and we're still seeing inflation over 10%. Okay? As a result, rates have been increased for 11 consecutive rises, and they're now at 4.25%, and we believe, shall we say, the next meeting in May, rates will increase again by another 0.25%. A level of not seen, let's just say, since 2009, which was 14 years ago. Now, the economy seems to take about six months before the rates seem to take effect and kick in. So it may well be before 2024, before the rates are even stopped, or they can even be considered, say, to be considered lowered to, shall we say, alleviate the problem. Other costs which, shall we say, um, exasperated house prices is what we call simple supply and demand, whereby people want to move to a certain type of house in a certain kind of desirable area. It may well be conditions placed on Greenbelt land or poor planning by, shall we say, councils or the stockpiling of land by the big housing developers. And the government is also considered to be at fault as it promised in their manifesto to build around 300,000 300, homes and we are nowhere near that level. And there's also a distinct lack of affordable and social housing, which only adds to the recent fuel in house prices. And remember, if you like the videos, smash the like button, subscribe to this channel, so you can reach a wider audience. Now, let's look at the following chart. The cost of house prices for the first time is out of the reach of many people. So what happens is people stay at home longer, Okay, they live with the parents. It may well be in the early 30s by the time they make the first house purchase. Are they consumably saving for a deposit? Yes. Or do they rely on bank, bank of mum and dad? Now, not all parents may be in a good financial position to help other children in order to make a property purchase. Now, until recently, shall we say, the average take-home pay used towards paying the mortgage or rent for first-time buyers was around 29%. If we look at the chart for Q1, it has increased, shall we say, to 35% as a result of price rises still rising for houses and wage growth or pay inflation is not keeping up with the specific, shall we say, house price increases. Now, with regard to all current mortgages, shall we say, 
around 25% of mortgage are on so-called standard variable rates, which have risen dramatically over the past 12 months, roughly now nearly at 7%. But the remaining 75, shall we say, tied to fixed rate deals, with the vast majority of these are, so say, two and five year deals. And many people will be shocked about the deals being offered to them when their existing deal ends. On a personal level, shall we say, my own rates increased from 1.89% to nearly 5%. Now, thankfully, I can afford it. I do have, shall we say, an outstanding mortgage, but my loan to value is less than 10%. So it may have gone up, shall we say, by a few pounds. But a lot of people will see increases in the excess of several hundred pounds. Hundred pounds. So how can people make them affordable? And in regard to the following chart, a quick look at some of the rates on offer. So for a two-year fixed at 75%, you're looking, shall we say, 4.76%. For 90% loan to value, it's 5.3%. And for 95% loan to value, it's around about 5.87%. So what does it mean for house pricing moving forward over the coming months? Well, if we look at the following chart from the Nationwide House Price Index, we've already seen house pricing falling in value, and they will surely continue to drop in value over the next months. And we're also seeing the time to sell houses in certain areas are taking long to complete. And in the past few weeks, we've seen organisations make, shall we say, predictions. So the OBR reckons house price will decrease around about 10% in 2023. And the two main players, Halifax and Nationwide, think price rises will drop around about 8% during this year. Now, the aim of this video is not to scare people or frighten them, but the harsh reality is people have enjoyed record low interest rates for the past decade. And many younger or current mortgage holders will never experience the sudden rise of the cost of living mortgages within the past few years. Now, hopefully, the cost of inflation will show signs of abating and we'll see lower rates of inflation by the end of this year, 2023. And as we've already seen, mortgage rates have receded since the dramatic, dramatic events at the end of last year as a result of the so-called list trust budgets. But for anyone, shall we say, coming to an end of their deal this year, what can we do? Now, it may well be worthwhile speaking to your provider, shopping around for your deals. Most providers or lenders will allow you to, shall we say, switch a deal with 100, within 120 days of your current deal ending. So speak to your providers. What else can you do? It may well be you consider making overpayments ahead of remortgaging. So you may well, shall we say, get a better little deal because you want, shall we say, a better loan to value. So the better loan to value, the better deals or lesser interest rates on offer to you because you're seen as a less, shall we say, risk of default. Now, if you are concerned about the increased rates, speak to your mortgage provider, okay? Can you come to some kind of agreement to alleviate future price rises? Or is it, shall we say, an extreme scenario worth extending the loan, the loan period of your term to make payments affordable in the short term? And then hopefully of the long term, your finances will improve and it may well be a solution. You then rechange the deal when your current deal ends or when your financial circumstances improve. So it may be a short term fix, to re, shall we say, but can you settle down when the rates, shall we say, settle down? let's just say, at the end of your next deal, okay, or when the Bank of England has, shall we say, gone back to normality, and we're seeing rates on a lot lower basis of what we're on now, and inflation is on a more manageable or controlled basis. Now remember, these are my own opinions, okay, speech you provides, okay, but are we going to see a cost of living crisis? We've already seen from the charts the last few weeks, house prices are falling, but what will happen to them? moving forwards for the remainder of 2023 remember if you like the videos smash the like button subscribe to this channel and we'll see you again in the next video